for your blessings. We thank you for your love, your joy. We've come to, to that quick moment, that short moment, because today, God, even though we've come to hear a word, we've come more so to pray one with another. So I pray that this word will pierce the hearts of the people. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. Let us go to the book of Mark and the sixth chapter. Mark and the sixth chapter. Mark chapter six. And we're going to go to verse number 30. Um, there is a word from the Lord coming from the book of Mark chapter six, verse 30. Um, many of you do not know who I am, but I like to read long texts because I need you to understand the context. And sometimes the truth is many of us don't read the word of God. So this is the only time you will be reading the word of God as it is written and in this capacity. So Mark in the sixth chapter, beginning with verse 30, and we're going to read 14 verses. So just bear with me as we read the word of God. The word of God says that then the apostle gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what he had done and what they had, what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest there a while. While there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in a boat by themselves. But the multitudes kept, multitudes kept, the multitudes saw them departing and many knew him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place. The hour, and already the hour is late. Send them away. Ooh, I love that. The disciples came to him <laughs> and said, this is a deserted place. And already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Mm. But he answered and said to them, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? 200 denarii um, is worth half a year's wages back in the time. But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they have found out, they said five and two fish. Then commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on a green grass. So they sat in, down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had given, when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked to heaven, blessed and broke the loaf and gave to the disciples before them. And the two fish he divided among them all so that they ate and they were filled. And they took up the 12 baskets full of arrangements and full of fragments and fresh. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men besides children and women. This is a very, very, very interesting text in the Bible. It's very interesting to me because it's not often that you see the disciples at any moment in the Bible telling Jesus what to do. The Bible says that disciples and Jesus have had a long day they have done the work. And the Bible says in the beginning of our particular context that they have gone to Jesus and begin to tell him all the things that they have done and all the things that they have taught. So in other words, it wasn't just that Jesus was teaching. It was also that they were teaching. It wasn't that Jesus was the only one doing miracles. It was also that they were providing and working under the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And so now they're telling Jesus because they're tired. And we know this because the Bible says Jesus says to them, come by here to a deserted place and rest a while. And while they tried to escape, the Bible says that when they're trying to escape, people kept coming and coming and coming and coming to the point where they were overwhelmed. So they departed in a boat to be by themselves. 
But the multitude saw them departing and they saw it and they knew who Jesus was. So Jesus felt compassion for them. Now the Bible says that as they um, are now here in this particular context, Jesus is teaching, Jesus is talking to them, Jesus is um, doing all that he's doing and the hour is late. People have traveled from many cities to this one place. People have gone, come from to and fro to this one place. People have traveled from Amorondo to Gweru. People have traveled from Harare to Brawaya. People have traveled from Indiana all the way to Atlanta. People have traveled afar to see Jesus and to hear Jesus. And now the hour is late. And so the Bible says that Jesus now um, is done preaching and the disciples came to him and said, I think that's the first mistake that we as Christians often do in life. The Bible says the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send them away that they may go right there. I mean, right there, if we have to pause right there. Because too many times in our Christian journey, we have a tendency of going to Jesus and telling Jesus what to do. The Bible says they came to him. The disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place. They came to him and said, this is a deserted place. The hour is late. Send them away. There's a problem with the rhetoric right there, right there. Let's just pause and just spend time on this little part. There's a problem with the rhetoric of the disciples. Because one, they said, this is a deserted place. The hour is late. Send them away. Okay. This is a deserted place. I thought it's Jesus who created the heavens and the earth. I thought it was Jesus who created the deserts. I thought it was Jesus who knows how much water is in the ocean. I thought it's Jesus who knows how many trees are planted under the entire earth. I thought it's Jesus who spoke even this place into existence. And then they said, the hour is late. It's already late. But if I understood it correctly, it is Jesus who put time into existence. If I understood it correctly, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But the Bible says that the disciples came to him, ah, ooh, and they said to him, this is a deserted place. The hour is already late. Send them away. People of God, there is a problem when we go to Jesus and tell one Jesus what to do. There's also a problem when we go to Jesus and tell Jesus what to do based on our lack of faith. Because it could have been one thing to come to Jesus and say, God, I know you can do this. I know you can um, feed these people. I know that these people are tired, but you can multiply anything. You can make this come out of nowhere. It would have been one thing if they came in faith and told Jesus out of faith, do this because you are who you are. But they came to Jesus and told him because it's a deserted place. Because the hour is late, you must send them away. I want you to understand very clearly because some of us are in situations in our lives where God is in just in, a, how do I put, how do I place this? Some of us have been dealing with things that God is still allowing you to deal with because you keep coming to him and telling him what he cannot do, telling him what, how big your problems are, telling him how your situation is unmovable, unsolvable, and you'll tell him how to take this thing away. But the Bible says that when Jesus hears what they said, this is what Jesus says to them. Well, if they have nothing, you give them something to eat. Since you are the one who's coming to me and you're telling me that this is a deserted place, the hour is late and to send them away. Well, since you have all authority as you claim you have by simply telling the one who has authority to, that this is a deserted place, the hour is late and send them away so that they're going to the surrounding country. I want you to know, people of God, very simply, that when you approach the throne of God, when you talk to God, when you enter into the season of prayer, do not enter with an arrogance of your lack of faith. Do not 
enter and go to God because of what you've seen. Do you not enter and, and into, into the throne of grace and go to God in a place of, this, uh, of, of, of lack of believing and of limiting who God is? Because God is not a God who is limited by place, by time, and by people. They immediately limited God because they said, God, Jesus, this is a deserted place. The hour is already late. Send them away. If that's the case, then why did you come to me? If that's the case, why didn't you do something about it? And I want you to know that many of us are still dealing with issues in our life because we keep on coming to God, telling God what to do, and telling God what to do in a place of lack of faith. The Bible says that he answers to them and says to them, give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. And then they responded back to Jesus. And they said again, well, what do you want us to do? You want us to go and spend 200 denarii worth of bread, which is half a year's worth of of wage, just to give them something to eat? Then Jesus shifts his perspective and his conversation. And he says to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And so the Bible says that they went and they go out and begin to find uh, and begin to look and ask how many loaves are out there. And they find a little boy with five loaves of bread and two fishes. The Bible says that Jesus demands them and Jesus commands them to sit down in groups and, 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 and in rings. And after that, he took the bread. He looked up to heaven. He blessed it. And he gave it to the disciples. He took the bread, the five loaves and two fishes. He looked up to heaven. He blessed it. And he broke it to people. I'm going to say that one more time. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. He looked up to heaven. He blessed it. And he broke it. This entire sermon really... Is about prayer. I want you to understand really simply that when you pray, your faith dictates what God does. When you move and ask God in, the, in prayer, what you believe dictates what God does. And then I also want you to understand that when you pray, prayer has the ability to surpass all logic, to do things that do not make sense, to make doors open that should not ever be open, to bring back people who, who, who you were once in communion with, to place, a, to, a, a, to, to unlift a heavy burden that you've been dealing with. When you pray, your prayers have power enough to do things that only God can do. Here's how we know. Because when the disciples made the logical case to Jesus, that Jesus, this is a deserted place. The hour is late to do anything. You need to send them away. Jesus says to them, while well, you feed them, they go back to the logic of saying, it would take us half a year's wages to feed these people. We don't have that. We're just disciples. We're poor. And, but why don't you send them to the surrounding cities and lodges so, and villages so they can get what they need? And God, Jesus literally says, you know what? Let me show you something. Let me show you what prayer can do. Let me show you what faith can do. Let me show you what having a little faith of mustard seed can do. And he takes the bread, looks up to heaven, and blesses it. The Bible says 5,000 people are there, not including men, not including women and children. After Jesus blesses the blend, after Jesus defies the logic, after Jesus cancels the science of baking bread, after Jesus canceled the, 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 the nature of fish and multiplying it and dividing it, after Jesus that cancels all of that stuff. He says, I, I, that stuff doesn't matter. I know the logic, but I also know what happens in the supernatural. I know the logic, but I also 
know the faith. Now, it's interesting because Jesus didn't have to pray. Jesus didn't have to bless the bread. Jesus could have simply done what he typically does, which is he touches and it multiplies. He could have just spoken it and it came to pass. But Jesus specifically looks up to heaven in prayer posture, blesses the bread, and divides it. Because he wants somebody in this line today to understand that while you are coming to me, demanding when demanding and telling me what I cannot do, telling me how much your problems are, um, are how big they look. And instead of coming to me and reminding me how big I am and how I'm so big that my problems are nothing compared to who I am. Jesus says, when you come to God, come with faith. And when you come to God, don't come with logic. Because logic would say, ah, to father situation, okay. Logic would say, ah, that child of mine, mm. Logic would say, mm, this marriage, mm. Logic would say, mm, this job, um. Logic would say, mm, this situation, mm. And logic would say, mm, logic will make you do things that you're not supposed to do when you should have been praying about it in faith. He blesses the bread and the fish. He gives it to the disciples. As they pass it out, it divides itself. It multiplies. And after they were done eating, there was extra on the side. Pastor, what are you trying to tell us? What do you want us to get from this? Here's what I want you to get. If you believe that God can do something, don't go to God limiting him, but go to God reminding him what he can do. Remind him and claim the promises. Because this is what the, 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 the conversation should have looked like with the disciples when they first went to God. The conversation should have looked like this when he said, instead of saying, um, they should have said, when they went to him, Jesus, this is a deserted place. The hour is late, but we know what you can do. We've seen what you can do. We know who you are. We've seen how you've moved. You've seen how you multiply and heal people. We know the majestic power in your hands. So would you feed these people? Father, in the name of Jesus, increase our faith. Maybe God, the reality is some of the things that we've been asking for have not been answered. Because we always come to you just reminding you of how big our problems are. We're never coming to you to ask and seek to you, God, and remind you of what you said you would do. God, you told us that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask of or think of. You told us that not, no one has seen the great things that you have in store for us. You told us to ask and we shall receive. You told us to knock and you shall answer. You told us don't worry because if a bird is taken care of, if a lily in the valley is taken care of, how much more would the heavenly father take care of us? But God, we know now that we have a part to play in this. So I pray for each and every person in this line today. For Tafadzwa, for every mother in this line, every father, every son, every daughter that, that is represented in these families. For every situation that is represented here today, God. Increase their faith so that they come to you in remembrance of what you, who you are. God, you are the God who is able to defy, to defy all logic. It was not logical.
for you to die for us on the cross of Calvary. It was not logical for you to create us when we when you knew what was sin. It was not logical for you to, to, to do all that you do. And honestly, God, it wasn't logical for you to allow us to wake us up this morning. But you're not the God of the logic. You are the God of the supernatural. So help us to walk in that power. Help us to walk in supernatural belief and strength that I can do all things, that you can do anything. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.